217-01 Peak Auto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request for a conditional use permit for a minor automotive repair facility in CC zoning. The property is located at 1113 Marion Street. Um, this, as you see on the map on the screen, is the southwest corner of East Ann and Marion. Um, and it is directly west of the applicant's current facility, Pete's Auto, which is at the southwest corner of East Ann and Marion. Um, it is zoned highway commercial. Um, as discussed in the staff report, the city's land development regulations divide automotive repair facilities into two categories, major and minor. A minor repair is basically oil changes, brake jobs, and tires, minor routine maintenance type items. Major automotive repair includes your auto body shops and transmission shops. You're actually taking vehicles apart and putting them back together. Two different intensities. Um, CH zoning across the street allows for both. CC zoning does not allow major, but it does allow minor with the conditional use approval. And that is what the applicant is requesting. Um, character area, Marion Street really is the dividing line between the more intensive character area along the Ashley Street Corridor, uh, which is Community Activity Center, and Neighborhood Activity Center on the east side, which is sort of that transition zone between Ashley and Lee Street. Aerial, this has been a vacant lot, has been a vacant lot for a long, long time. Um, however, the zoning pattern that you see along the map, along East End, is no longer a residential corridor. Uh, one thing that's interesting to note is on the aerial, the property immediately to the east, you see a duplex residential building that's there, but it is owned community commercial as well, uh, which interestingly means no buffer yard is required. This lot is fairly hard to develop anything on. It is 50 feet wide um, by very long. Um, and being a corner lot, it was sort of eaten up by setbacks all the way around. However, the applicants in their site planning um, have fit in a building that barely fits. Um, it is one bay garage, it would be in the center of the west wall that faces Marion Street, and they're proposing, at least initially, to use this as storage uh, for like overnight vehicle parking that is secure. Um, they would have five vehicles capacity. If you could picture the door in the middle, you would drive in, you'd have two vehicles that turn to the left, two vehicles that would turn to the right, and one that could be left in the middle. Long term, however, the applicant is thinking perhaps minor automotive repair active um, or activities here, such as oil changes or brake jobs, something that is more routine with their customers than what they might get into in the main facility across the street. Um, currently, there are several vehicles that are parked here more than just overnight. Um, those are non-compliant, which means they would be <coughs> relocated and, and cleaned up. Outdoor storage is how we would classify this. That has never been allowed in CC zoning, and it still wouldn't be even after the conditional use. Um, and nor is it allowed with minor automotive repair. Um, the main facility across the street has been there for several decades. They have recently repaid the parking area in the front yard and really in the process of upgrading their entire facility. So this was the first step. And the second step is to allow for a little more expansion room of building space by putting the building across the street. Um, here is the duplex next door going to the east on East End, which is in CC zoning. And then you have some of the other houses nearby. Um, some of those are even zoned commercial. In terms of conditional use review criteria, those are there in your packet. Staff is finding the request consistent with all of those, consistent with the comprehensive plan, mainly based on the character area classifications. And we're recommending approval to you with three conditions. The first one, approval shall be granted for a minor automotive repair facility that is part of an existing automotive repair facility directly across the street to the west. In other words, the two go together. Number two, there shall be no outdoor storage of any kind, no signage along Marion Street, no metal siding, and the facility shall maintain compliance with all other applicable regulations. And then lastly, number three, Conditional use approval shall expire after three years from the date of approval if no plans for a building permit have been submitted by that time. I'm glad to answer any questions you may have. I just got a quick question, Matt, on, on one of your conditions. I know we spoke about last week. I just saw the photo that you, that you put up there of uh, their renovated facility, if you will, a color photo. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that is a, somewhat a mixture of 
of the brick and vertical metal siding. It is. And so since you, your term, you said these bills would go together, but you will not allow them to put metal siding across the street. In terms of the use, um, the city prohibits metal siding outside of industrial zoning districts on all facades that face the, the front yard, uh, which on this property is Marion Street is the front yard uh, by code definition. The East Ann Street frontage by definition is a side yard. So straight up by the code, the entire west side, and then half of the 20-foot wall that faces north, half of the 20-foot wall that faces south, is required to be something other than metal. Um, this is a conditional use request. You do have other development types, including residential nearby. You have a very close proximity of the proposed building to the residential use to the east. Um, staff is also cognizant of the long-term redevelopment proposals along East Ann Street. So therefore, an industrial looking building we find to be inappropriate. So therefore, we're recommending no metal siding on any of the four walls. Okay, Mr. Fulton? That was actually my question. I just, I, as a comment, I, 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 find that, I find that particular condition onerous. I think, <laughs> I, I think that's going to increase cost, it's going to increase upkeep, and it's not necessarily anything that I think serves any useful purpose, but that's just me, so. Mm, I know. Welcome back. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can talk now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, guys. <laughs> um, what about the residential units to the south? Is there, a, what sort of uh, to the separation? East? No, directly to the south. To, to the south. Um, they're required a buffer yard there because it's commercial development next to residential. Uh, a 20 foot wide buffer yard with landscaping or 10 feet wide with a solid fence. That existing <coughs> dwelling unit to the south is very close. Mm -hmm. The building wall is set back from the property line, but as you look at that upper left photograph, that's the residence in question. That is a lean to carport and it goes, I think, right up to the property line. So it's sort of tight quarters on the south end. The applicant, being aware of that, has sort of shifted their building northward to give quite a bit of room, about 35 or so feet between the building and the property, which I think is appropriate that they had room enough to do that. It was the east-west component of the property that made this property difficult to site plan. But yes, a buffer yard is required on that south end, but only on the south end. Any other questions for staff? There being none, is anyone here tonight wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward. There being none, anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to this request, please come forward this evening. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? There being none, commissioners at this time, if we need to have any further discussion, or I will I will definitely have to take a motion at this time. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Gladman. I actually wanted to know if the applicant is aware of these conditions. Is that, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, both the applicant and the applicant's architect have been involved with this. They were sent copies of this mm -hmm. um, over a week ago, um, and they are aware of it. In fact, we even discussed these types of conditions before they submitted their application. <coughs> so, their plan, the as we discussed in the work session, their plan was to construct the building using um, concrete siding. Okay. And so to follow up on Commissioner Paulson's comment about the metal siding, they, that's not an issue for them. So, Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I will piggyback off that question and what we'll comment on that is. So, block exterior would be acceptable there? Not unfinished block. Painted. Yeah, you know, but finished. Stucco, some material. But painted. there's a difference between stucco and paint. I'm just Correct. Curious. That's an allowable material. Brick, stone, vinyl siding, all sorts of things. Just not metal siding. Another flaw in our regulation. Another flaw in our regulation. So, I believe we have a motion from Commissioner Wiles. Is that true? No. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I had a question. Oh, not, not I'm sorry. Commissioner you, you, No, no, I, you've already, I had a question. Which okay. I thought that was a preface for a I did too. No, go ahead, please. So, do we have a motion, Commissioner, Commissioner Wiles? Well, Mr. Chairman, I would be happy to make a motion. Thank you. To find this consistently comprehensive plan and recommend approval. Okay, do I have a second with, on that? With the conditions. With all three conditions. With the conditions as written. Okay. 
We have a motion from Commissioner Wiles. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Gladwell, second. Commissioner <laughs> Hall, where you been? No, I'm just waiting for somebody else to do it. Any further discussion on this? There being none, I will now ask for a vote on this. If I see five, raising your right hand. It looks like that is seven all opposed. One, so that's seven, one, Ms. Carmel. It passes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.